Hey there, Saki here from Saki Tech, and in today's video, we will be doing an unboxing, a first time setup, and a quick review for the Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus. The Galaxy S8 unboxing is a similar experience, so I'll put that box aside and unbox the S8 Plus instead. So as you can see, we have a beautiful box. Let's slowly unravel it and observe that gorgeous frontal display of the S8 Plus. The front certainly is a marvel. The large and tall display simply dominates and the edge-to-edge -edge dual curved display highlights its unique design that so far has been unmatched by any other smartphone. Now let me put the phone aside for a second and take a look at what's inside the box. So of course we have some user manuals and we have two adapters, one of which is a USB Type-C to micro USB converter in case you need some backwards compatibility. And the other one is a USB Type-C to a regular USB converter in case you want to either connect a USB flash drive to your S8 or to even connect an iPhone for transfer purposes. And of course we have the adaptive fast charging wall adapter and a cable to go with it. Now this charger allows you to fast charge your phone from zero to 100 in as little as one and a half hours maybe give or take 10 minutes. And finally, of course, we have the AKG tuned earphones that are going to deliver some high fidelity sound to your ears. So that's what's in the box and I'm glad accessories are all in black color. So now let's move on to the prize, the S8 Plus. All right, so let's look around the phone really quick, do a quick tour of the device physically, and then we will actually power the device on and perform a first time setup. Now, as you can see on the back in the middle, you've got the 12 megapixel uh, dual pixel camera, which is the same camera that you're going to find on the S7, plus some software enhancements to get even better results. Uh, right next to it, you're going to get the fingerprint sensor. As you know, we don't have a fingerprint sensor on the front of the phone, so they moved it to the back over here, right next to the camera. And over here, we have the LED flash on the top, the circular one. And this one actually is the heart rate sensor that basically has been coming with just about all the Galaxy phones from the beginning of time. For those of you who do not know, you can use this sensor to check your heart rate, uh, check your stress levels, and also check your oxygen levels just by putting the finger on top of it and using the application. And then you just have to use the app that comes with the phone and that's gonna deliver you the results um, one by one. And of course, when you flip the phone over, um, nothing on the front really except for that large and tall screen. No home button. We have a bunch of sensors on the top, including the camera, the front-facing camera. Uh, on the side, we have the dedicated Bixby button at the bottom over here and the volume rocker on top. So if you press the Bixby button, it brings up the Bixby interface. And then uh, it looks like accidentally I pressed the power on button, which is actually right over here. So that's the power on button right over there. Now, of course, if you look at the bottom of the phone, you'll be seeing the uh, headphone jack. Uh, in the middle, you've got the USB Type-C connector, and of course, right next to that, you have the uh, speakers that come with the Samsung Galaxy S8. It only comes with a single speaker. It is not stereo speakers. If you flip over and look at the top, you'll see that we have the SIM card tray that also takes in the micro SD card expansion. So you have a dual tray, which takes the SIM card and the micro SD card in the same interface. And real quick on the front, just so you guys know, on the top we actually have five different pieces of things going on here. Uh, the middle one here is the earpiece, then you've got the front facing camera, and then you've got the iris scanner. Over here we have uh, proximity sensors, two of them, and also one iris detection LED, which can detect your iris even if you're trying to unlock your phone at night time. So that's the, why they put an iris detection LED right over here. So those are the sensors that we have on the top. All right, so as you can see, we already turned on the phone by mistake, so let's uh, continue from here. So when you first turn on the phone, it, it takes a couple seconds to load up and come to this screen. Then we click Start, and let's see what's gonna happen. So did you know your uh, phone can make calls over Wi-Fi? We're gonna skip that for now. Let me actually connect to my Wi-Fi so we have some kind of connection going on, even though the SIM card is already in there. It's in, so let's connect to the Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi quickly connected, click OK, and let's click Next. The next thing they want us to do is basically agree to all the terms. Let's do that right now. Let's uh, undo the diagnostic data. 
I don't like sending my diagnostic information over to carriers or manufacturers. So now it's going to be checking the network and of course a quick checkup for the software updates and it wants me to log into my Google account. Okay, so after I put in my username and my password, this is the screen I, I got dropped on and here are the options they want me to pick. Uh, backup device data, let me just uncheck that. Uh, use Google's location services, absolutely improve location accuracy by using Wi-Fi, uh, help improve Android. Let me uncheck that as well and then let me click next and then again just a second it says and it's uh, moving forward. Of course it's going to ask you do you want to restore your apps and data. I'm going to say no, I'm going to uh, start a brand new device. So don't restore. Do you want to protect your phone? You can but I'm going to skip it for now. But again uh, you can do face recognition you can set up a fingerprint or you can use the iris scanner on the front over here uh, to use your eyeballs for security. And of course, if you want none of those, you have the option to use a regular pin, pattern, or password. So these are all the security options you get with the Samsung Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus. Let me just say no thank you for now and skip it. Of course, you're going to say do not do that, but I'm going to skip it anyway. I'm going to set it up later. It wants me to sign into my Samsung account so I can actually use all these Samsung services such as Themes, Bixby, Cloud. So let me do that right now so I can show you the themes at least so uh, you can see how you can customize the phone if you so desire. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip all this um, for now. These are the options you can get. You can restore from the Samsung Cloud if you previously had something backed up to your cloud or you can do a smart switch which means you can copy from your old device with smart switch. Okay, if you have an iPhone, any other Android phone, if you tap this it's going to walk you through and show you exactly what to do to transfer all your data over to your new phone. So let's skip this. So let's uh, click finish. Also, obviously, they want you to set these things up, secure your stuff, set the screen layout, and uh, agree to these weather forecast terms. Let's just do that. Click finish. It's locating, and please wait. And there we go. So also, do you want to agree to the device data collection? This is from T-Mobile. The phone is a T-Mobile phone, so they're asking me to do the same thing. I'm going to disagree to that. Just close it for a minute, and um, let's. there we go. There's the Samsung Galaxy S8 in its full glory. All right, so let's uh, take a look around a little bit. So let's uh, swipe around. We have some um, home screens over here. Uh, if you swipe to the right, of course, we get access to Bixby cards. And again, these are things like uh, my schedule, my gallery, uh, upcoming reminders, today's weather, today's activity, if you indulge in any health activities such as steps and workouts. And then you have Samsung themes, wallpaper recommendations, some news over here, and stuff like that. And there's that application, the Giphy application gives you animated images. All right, so that's the Bixby for now. Uh, normally what Bixby is supposed to be doing is it is supposed to allow you to control a lot of your phone's functionality just by using your voice. So if I go into an app such as Messages, I can press Bixby and say create a new message, then dictate the message, then send the message. Or if I go to the camera application, I can tell Bixby to take the shot or record a video. Just by using my voice commands, I can do everything. But those features are coming soon. They're not available yet. For now, when you launch Bixby, either by pressing the button or swiping over, this is all you get, all right? But don't worry, more things are gonna be coming soon. So here I'm pressing the Bixby button and then Bixby launches. The Bixby cards do launch. You can tap on the settings and make some modifications. You can remove cards if you want. Uh, you can add Bixby to the lock screen and do some other customization stuff. Uh, let's see what else we have. If you press and hold on the screen, you can go to the wallpapers and themes, widgets and home screen settings. So let's go to wallpapers and themes. It takes you to Samsung store. Uh, the first thing you see at the bottom here is wallpapers, so that's the wallpapers. You got featured wallpapers, you can tap here, top wallpapers, and you can download any one of these. Most of them are free, okay? So if I wanted to get something like this, I can just download that immediately, all right? Uh, already there has been 10,000 plus downloads for this wallpaper. Now let me go back. If you tap this over here, you can go to the themes, and from the themes, you can change the entire interface of your phone. So if I go over here, uh, I can download this dream theme and this is what it's going to look like. If I tap this, that's exactly what my phone is going to look like. Not something I would want personally, but looks like that would be great for some ladies. 
Now, if I go over here, you can also tap on icons and then you can download icon packs so you can modify your icons. So if I go back out here, these are my current icons, but if I can, I can go and download more icons from the theme store and then we have some other stuff over here. If I go back, uh, everybody know what widgets are. So let's go to home screen settings and as you can see, you can change the layout for the home screen. So if I tap this, what I could do is I could switch between home app I can switch between home and apps screen, meaning the home and apps screen are going to be separate, or I can do home screen only. So if I do that, all my apps will be shown on the home screen, and I'm going to lose the app drawer. Okay, I prefer to have it, so we're going to keep it like that. So go back, you can change the grid size and make some other modifications. You know, I cannot go into everything, uh, but let's do this, pull this down. You know, we have some quick toggles, brightness uh, slider go into settings and we have that nice and clean interface. Of course, this is Android 7.0 Nougat. And certainly I'm gonna be making a video that goes into full and complete details of all these different settings. So I'll go into display and I'll show you everything on upcoming videos. But uh, some, some things, um, you know, it's got a gorgeous display. And right now it's set to be at full high definition plus. So that is not even quad HD plus, still looks beautiful. But I can go back in here and I can change the screen resolution to HD+, plus, that's the numbers, FHD+, plus or uh, WQHD+, plus, which is Quad HD+, plus resolution, and that's going to give you the sharpest possible display. But as I'm looking at the screen right now, it still looks sharp and gorgeous. It is the Super AMOLED uh, display with the latest technologies. And then here's another thing uh, for the, because the display is so tall, some apps do not fit entirely in the uh, display. So you can go here and you can tweak those things. So you can say, for example, make sure Chrome adjusts to the full screen and shows up on the entire screen. So things like this, I'll be going into more detail when I make the video that goes into the full depth of all the settings and tips and tricks for the Samsung Galaxy S8. But that's basically it, guys. I mean, it's not that different than a Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge or even a Note 5 that has a Nougat update. Uh, basically, the interface is the same. The only th new thing that we have is the Bixby. And of course, we've got the uh, gorgeous screen. Uh, we've got the lack of any physical home buttons. Meanwhile, these keys here can be modified. So right now, this button over here is designed to do multitasking and also uh, act as the recent function. So if I tap this, it brings up the uh, you know, all the applications running in the background. I can activate multitasking from here. That's the home button, that's the back button, but I can actually switch these around as I desire if I go into the settings, if I go into the display, if I scroll down, and if I go to navigation bar. So that's called the navigation bar. If I tap this, I can actually modify uh, the button layout. So if I tap this, I can go like that. Now the back key is here, the recent key is over here, okay? Let's keep it like that for now. Looks like I can change the background color as well. Not too bad. Let's keep it like that. And uh, you can also unlock with home button. So what happens is if you have a pin or anything like that set up, if you enable this and if you press and hold the home button over here, it's gonna take you straight to the lock screen and you can put in your pin instead of using your iris scanner or fingerprint scanner. Not too bad. All right, that's it, guys. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe to Saki Tech. There's going to be a lot more S8 coverage on the channel. And of course, give this video a thumbs up if you love the Samsung Galaxy S8 or the S8 Plus. I'm going to see you guys in the next video. Have a fantastic day.